You gotta be careful when you're doing like wet methods of cooking because it just, it seems like it just gets really slimy. And then the more you chew it, the slimier it becomes in your mouth. So it's just like, it's just like your mouth keeps filling up with slime. I don't really have much experience with it other than having like a traditional Mexican cactus salad with like the queso fresco and, and tomatoes and chilies and cilantro. So that was like my only point of reference with it. So this was uh, definitely a, a challenge to, um, you know, to get it in raw, to clean it and to you know, just try to cook it as many ways as possible to like figure out what, what it is and like where the flavor goes when you do different things to it. The cactus is it's pretty amazing because I, I read that it's the, uh, the most efficient water to calorie conversion on the planet. So it's like it, it needs no water basically to to grow. They're they're really young. This is before they really start to to develop the stickers, the, the little spikes, the sp spines. So you're kind of just left with like this soft spine in the making. So basically you wanna just kind of run your knife down. I found that grilling it is like a really good method. So, um, so yeah, we basically just clean it up and, and uh, a little grapeseed oil and salt and grill it. And uh, so I'm doing it kind of like a, I guess a, a little mods theme to it. We have a, a really great paillard dish on the menu, so I wanted to do like a cac grilled cactus paillard. I try to keep all the other elements like pretty much raw, just to to have the supporting characters kind of like just like raw, fresh, and like simple. The green flavor of the cactus is like really subtle. It's kind of like a, a really mild asparagus or like a green bean. It takes about three minutes. You'll see like the, uh, see the bright green color then it'll kind of turn like an olive green. A lot of the guys I talked to said like traditionally, they're like typically boiled or grilled and they make tacos with them, sometimes tamales as a filling. Um, thrown in soups, which gives it a nice texture, like gives it a nice, like richer body, and then just kind of like grilled up or boiled and made like into a salad with the chilies and the cheese. I'm gonna pop this in the fridge, chill it, so it's a little easier to work with, so it's not steaming while I try to bread it. So we got a kind of like a little dredging station, masa harina. Kind of wanted to try that instead of flour, and <laughs> it works out really well. I'm only gonna do one side. And then a, a little egg white Dijon wash for it, and then the final dredge in the panko. So this is a pineapple just compressed with some mezcal. It's pretty nice, like, organic, uh, smoky mezcal. I wanted to find a way to put tequila or mezcal in this dish somewhere. Tomato hearts, tomato slices. This is like another, like, tons of natural glutamate, uh, like natural acid. Mexican tartar. Cactus is like really great with onion. Just got a couple heirloom tomato hearts. It's the moment of truth. Should I be nervous? Respect is paid to the cactus. For sure. The light raw ingredients are definitely, you get a lot of the cactus flavor coming through. So, that's all I could do. Respect it. You know, we, we could play with all the, the crazy stuff, but something that's as household as peppercorn that everybody knows and everyone has a frame of reference with, I think to f try to find a way to use that ingredient artfully, yeah, I, I think it'll be a, I think it'll be a good challenge for Aaron. He's creative enough to come up with a, a tactful way to use use the peppercorns. So.